be normal, be normal, be normal, be normal. Do you remember that part in Hereditary where Tony Collette was like crawling up the walls and then she gets on the ceiling and she's like banging her head into the ceiling like this? I am fighting the urge to do that right now, but I think I'm doing a really good job so far. If you are new here and this is the first video that you're catching from me, I think you picked the wrong video. You should probably try again like with anything else, preferably from a different creator entirely. However, if you do decide to stay, um, this is a Neopets video from a creator, a YouTuber that is extremely normal about Neopets. Uh, and I'm the creator. I'm the creator that's really normal about Neopets. Totally hot, totally cool. So if you don't know, my entire personality uh, when it comes to Neopets is that Lord Cass is my favorite character and I'm just like a furry. I'm honestly a furry. Like Neopets made me a furry. I'm fine with it. I'm proud of it, in fact. And also I uh, hosted the Neopets AMA last month in March. So you guys are right. I'm a queen. I was so nervous. I mean, look at me. This is my own channel and I'm like, like I really have successfully fooled so many people. It's crazy, honestly. Like any day now, the house of cards is gonna come down. Any day now, you're all gonna realize that I am not supposed to be doing any of this. I'm supposed to be living under a rock in the rainforest as like an undiscovered species of isopod or something. I just like don't know how I ended up here in this room full of things that I took out. I made that because, sing it if you know it, I make my favorite character, my entire personality. I said I make my favorite character my entire fucking personality and that was totally me during the AMA I was just like oh my god how did I end up in this situation what have I done my fave Lord Cass you can see of course I had to wear the shirt thank you so much by the way like for just being nice to me first of all and second of all like <laughs> you guys are so supportive like how did I do how do I deserve this believe me I am both terrified of being perceived and also a content creator who also also hates myself so I will go out of my way to look for negative comments and like none to be found you guys were so nice you were so supportive you fucking showed up for me I love you guys so much so yeah even though I was so so nervous I had such a good time because I got to talk about the plot with my besties the TNT creative team aka the ones that wrote the plot and have been involved with the plot and are doing like the social media aspect of the plot all of these people are like the heart of Neopets truly I cannot say enough good things about them just like what they are about to inflict on us I just know it's going to be so good. I just can't wait. All right, extremely quick context moment for those of you who are hanging on by a hope and a prayer, trying to follow along. Have I mentioned that I like this character, Lord Cass? I haven't seen him in 20 years, you guys. 20 real years. Yeah, he's been missing. The last time I saw this man alive and well was in a Neopets plot, which are like these crazy stories that affect the whole website. And that was in 2004, where he was presumed dead. And back in December of 2023, that would be last December, December, a mere few months ago, there were some teasers released for the upcoming Neopets plot. And in the background of an entirely unrelated situation to Lord Cass, none other than Lord Cass's faithful sword was spotted in the background. That's right. Yeah, that's Lord Cass's sword. There's no one else in the whole wide world who has a sword like that. That is Lord Cass's sword. And safe to say, I, for one, haven't been the same since. So yeah, that's a big deal. People have obviously been talking like, oh my gosh, is Lord Cass coming back is he like in there because this character currently um that we see in this comic frame that's nyx and she's lost trapped whatever in a place called the void and so now the thought is like oh my gosh is lord cast in the void but we don't know we just have this thing to go off of where that's his sword and we haven't seen the man or the sword in 20 real years so safe to say like the lord cast stands are not doing well check in on the lord cast stands and you guys know that i wanted to be way worse Worse, but I had to ask. You know, there's just one thing in particular during the advent calendar that I happened to catch out of the corner of my eye. I just wasn't even really looking for it, honestly. It was just like this really, really cool sword. And I just wonder if we'll learn more about that sword at some point, at any point, or if it's just kind of there for just because it was like litter or trash or something. I don't, I don't know. 
So we'll see, I guess, maybe. Yes. Yep. They they let me. They asked. I did my best not to be like, hey, um, so Lord Cass, right? That sword, I'd know it anywhere. It's obviously his sword, Tristorel, I would know because, you know, I used to like polish it as his wife. I used to like help him with it. I'd be like, baby, wait, hold on. You're going to forget Trith Tristorel. Don't forget Tristorel. He didn't. Even when he got zapped into the void, people thought that he got killed. He got zoinked. He got zapped, zooted out of existence until I saw like a body sprawled out in rigor mortis and I was able to like do an autopsy and shit and be like, yep, these organs are not working. He is dead. I have to let go and start the grieving process. Um, I was not going to accept that he was dead. I just wasn't. And so I just waited. You know, obviously I love the guy, but I just feel like he was so underutilized. He's just so beautiful and he just has such potential for this like amazing story or like, I don't know, redemption arc, like possibly. Or honestly, I mean, my my hopes and dreams would be that he, he would get a redemption arc. I want him to be at peace. However, if he just wants to come back and be so fucking evil and like finally once and for all take the trash out to Meridel dump once and for all, that would be fine with me too. Also, I love a good villain. <laughs> which is why I'm so excited for the plot because I think we're gonna get lots of good villains. I didn't even ask actually, I was like so um, mature. I just said that I was excited to learn more about the interesting sword in the void. That's all I said. They didn't even have to respond. They could have just been like, cool. Yeah, we'll see. But they did. I knew we weren't gonna get through this without you you asking <laughs> about the sword and I completely understand. <laughs> and what we did see was, you're right, a, a very Beautiful I know sword. what I saw. <laughs> Very ornate. It definitely seems like it belonged to someone in particular. Whatever happened to the wielder of that sword, well, I guess you could surmise that they might be in that same strange place that our characters were surviving in. It seemed pretty dangerous. I, I guess we don't know if, if, you know, someone would be able to survive in that harsh condition. Maybe if they're a, a survivor, they might be able to. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's the only we'll, we'll see of that piece of potential litter. <laughs> cool, cool, very good to know. Me diving into the void, just <laughs> looking, looking everywhere, high and low. Cool, 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 cool. I had to really act normal when I got that information. I was so strong, like Lord Kaz. <laughs> Y'all don't even understand. I have done something so mentally weird and probably bad for me with this character. I am so sick and tired of waiting for my husband to return from the war. It's been 20 years. You called me crazy, not you specifically, but like there were people out there who called me crazy. That sword belongs to my husband, Lord Cass, who, say it with me, did nothing wrong. Yeah, I love this man right here. Look at him. He's like so fucking embroiled in a war, which by the way, fucking Meridel literally started it, literally started it. I've always loved him since the fucking moment I laid eyes on him as a, a confused seven-year-old wondering why a fucking winged like purple griffin guy was making me feel complex things. He did that to me. This is why I am the way I am to this day, 20 years later. Because of that, I have never stopped looking for him. And there were many, many years where he was presumed dead because I'll talk about it. I will talk about it. I'm just gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna, this is the Lord Cast video. Famously, I am working on a huge video about all the plots of Neopets, like all of them. This video is going to be so big, you guys. I'm still working on it. I'm sorry. It's going to take so fucking long because it's going to be like six hours long. However, we don't have time for that. We need to know right now. You need to know the context of Lord Cass because it has become clear that in some way, shape or form, he is about to be very relevant, whether he's coming back in the flesh alive, or maybe we finally find his body and we can start the grieving process, or maybe he's just referenced in some way, shape, or form, maybe. Either way, it's obvious. I don't think I'm being out of pocket for assuming at this point that he's about to become a big part of Neopian life. So to herald his return in whatever capacity that may be, it's time to talk about the truth, not what you'd learn in a Meridel classroom, but the truth about the sins of Meridel, the folly of Darigan, and the tragedy of Lord Cass, who again did nothing wrong. 
this of course is going to be as abridged of a version that I can give. You know that I can't really abridge anything, but I will, I will be abridging. So if it feels like I'm skimping on some details, that's why, and those will be in a later video. However, I think I'm gonna equip you with enough information to be able to make your own conclusions about what really happened down in Meridel. Did you ever hear of the tragedy of Lord Cass the Heart? I thought not. It's not a story the Meridellians would tell you. Starting off, we go all the way back to 2002 with the Champions of Meridal plot. A long time ago, a little Aisha named Leisha was playing in the woods with her brother, a loop named Jaren, and Jaren went missing and they never found him. And then a bunch of years later, Leisha and her friends Kayla, Morris, and Boris, they through one thing or another also end up disappearing. And this time they find out kind of where lost kids go in the woods when when they disappear, um, sometimes at least in, in Jaren's case, we'll get there because they are transported through magical means to Meridel a long time ago, because up until this event, Meridel was actually like just ruins. It was all ruins. Okay. So they go back in time. It's like this whole time thing. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does. And Jaren going back in time actually kind of restored Meridel and changed the history of it. It's like this weird thing. As I'm sure most of you know, Jaren Aaron, the lost brother is is like the, the hero of Meridel. He became a knight. They took him in. He was like a little kid. And they were like, oh my God, a lost child. And Jaren was like, help, I'm I'm stuck here. And he eventually became a knight. We'll go into it. And then Leisha, Kayla, Morris, and Boris get there. And you know, they like also explain their situation. And Leisha and Jaren reunite and stuff. Oh my God, it's you. I missed you. We're both here now. What the hell? Our parents are probably freaking out. So they're there. Everything's great. Um, until it's not because then strange disgusting creatures start attacking beautiful, perfect Meridel, aka Dargan Neopets. And this is the first time people had ever seen the Dargan Neopets, so they're like, what the fuck? And King Scarl starts to tell the story about how he's like, well, it could have something to do with this orb that we got that belonged to no one, by the way, but they might be here to take it because basically we were struggling. I suck as a king, so my kingdom was just really failing and we had nothing and I didn't want to give up any of my luxuries to help my people or ask my brother for aid because I'm too prideful or ask anybody for aid to, to be clear because again I am a shitty king and I am selfish and just wanted to figure it out on my own so I sent my knights out to go find something to help us and like lo and behold they just so happened to stumble upon this orb that belonged to no one like it had no name on it it did not belong to anyone it was just kind of sitting there they found it they brought it back and it was a miracle cure and it helped us and we did nothing wrong at all. So I have no idea why these creatures are attacking us. They must be here to steal my orb. Yeah, that's not the truth as you've probably come to realize. He acted like they did not steal something highly, highly fucking important and sacred to this man's kingdom that at the time he was just a simple resident of. He's probably like very young, honestly. And at the time he's just living his life in the Darrigan kingdom. By the way, that big scary bat guy is Lord Darrigan before the curse. Oh my fucking God, right? Like, can we just for a second talk about how fucking Tara, like curse him, curse him, please. I don't want to look at it anymore. Please curse him. Like if anything, honestly, this is the only time I will ever say this, but for that alone, for this transformation, alone. Maybe I'm not that mad that you guys stole the orb after all. So that's like one good thing that came out of the curse is that he looks so much better now, but still like Lord Cass is a victim. They're all victims. These two are victims too. They try to act, they're traitors. They try to act like Meridal's fine. Like it's just fine. Like, oh yeah, it's fine that you did this to us. However, in Champions of Meridal, Galgaroth himself, this little dweeb, this little fucking snitch, probably. He's like such a little simp for Darigan. He's such a little fucking bootlicker, honestly. He's actually, Darigan doesn't even wear shoes either. So he's like licking Darigan's bare feet. <laughs> This is like what he's become. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Let's go back to Champions of Meridal, Galgaroth's first appearance, because before he and Darigan were treacherous traitors, allied with the oppressors of their people, they were just as angry as anyone else in the Citadel. And it's actually Galgaroth himself who laments the true story of how Meridal actually got the orb. And it's a lot more akin to what you'd expect with King Skarl. No one's surprised, I'm sure, to find 
find that it was taken by force, actually. Yeah, oh yeah. Meridel just rode up one fine day, stormed this peaceful kingdom without a moment's notice. No, this is ours now, and I hope you live forever in poverty. How did Meridel come out of any of this as the good guys? Just wondering. They stole it. They just simply stole it, didn't ask for aid, nothing, didn't try to have an alliance of any sort. They just stole it, and that cursed the Darigan kingdom and in, in to fall into complete ruin. They all were not only um, like cursed to look hot and emo, they all really experienced a glow up, to be honest, I fear. However, um, they also claim that this isn't tied in with some kind of a disease. So it was like disease, famine, just cursed to be like depressed, sad, none of their crops would grow. The land became barren and, and just like big floating, cool, hot topic castle. So champions of Meridal, Galgaroth is is literally like anti Meridel is the one that's like, I'm gonna get them. Like they really ruined everything. He's like so hurt by that clearly. So this is the first like recorded Meridel Dargan war, but you know, the first altercation, the first stone was thrown by Meridel when they stole the orb, they did not have to do that. Lest you forget, I will never let you forget that. And Galgaroth in the first one wasn't going to let you forget that either. He will now though. I don't know why he just decided that it's no longer an issue. So back to the story, the Darigan forces storm Merida to get their orb back, which they do. The orb is obtained and it is given back to Darigan, but unfortunately nothing changes. Meridel isn't cursed, Darigan isn't restored, and this is where things get crazy and complicated because enter the three. The reason that the orb didn't do anything and wasn't working, at least as far as I speculate and as far as the context clues would imply, is that the orb was being controlled by another party, a third party, that had seized it in the interim, in the the, uh, in the exchange there that Meridel and Dargan had of the orb. And the third party, they're nowhere to be seen because the call is coming from inside the house, baby. And it's, it's a three-way call too. There's three people on the line. One, two, three. They call themselves the three. They're not very original. No, they are far too busy living inside people's brains and manipulating them. So this trio of malevolent spirits, one, two, three of them, is called the three. We love it. But honestly, I think it works. I think about that sometimes. I'm like, yeah, the three. Hell yeah. Of course they're the three. Like the three like I, when I say the three are here, the three, you know who that is, you know, three who? No, you're not asking what three, like who? Three people, but which three are they? Like, what are their names? You are not asking that because you know who the three are. Like when three bitches show up, it's not good. And you know that, you know, there should never be three people at any given time anywhere. Actually, that's a law in Neopia. You, you, you either four people, two people, five and so on, never three, because that has been taken. Actually, it's copied by the three. Essentially, they have a little bit of a niche, a little bit of a specialty, a thing, if you will, that they do, where they actually live inside your brain and manipulate you so that they will have power. And it's not just anybody. Like, they're not going to do this to King Altador, for example. They wouldn't even show their faces in his domain and his territory. They're looking for people who already have, like, kind of the cracks of vulnerability and weakness because they're angry and they're sad, maybe disenfranchised, you know, vulnerable leaders of vulnerable populations who have a lot on their shoulders and are carrying so much and don't have the privilege that people like King Scarl have or have the strength that King Altador had because although he had faced adversity in his own story as a leader, he had a strong group of friends surrounding him at all times. Even when one of his friends betrayed him, he still had 10 other besties to hold him the fuck down. He had the support of a community. It's little things like that that the three are looking for. Essentially, they're looking for the perfect victim, the perfect vulnerable victim, and they know what to look for. The way they find someone to go for and to victimize and to use is much like the way that a cult leader of a horrific religious cult would also find victims to manipulate for their own pursuit of power, which is a great segue. I really nailed that into telling you that the three were actually inspired by three Scientologists that used to come into the Neopets office building long, long, long ago. Very, very long time ago. Can't stress that enough. Back during the small scrap of time that Scientologists
just tried to weasel their way into Neopets. They are not doing anything there any longer and haven't been for a very long time. And I say that with a little bit of a twinge to my voice of annoyance because it's just amazing how many people still to this day think that the Scientologists are running Neopets and there's no Scientology in any of the games or any of the coding or any of the educational materials. And the only scrap, the only trace of Scientology left on the website actually is the three. It's not a compliment. The three suck, they're terrible, they're evil. I would cry in my bed for days if someone said that I went into the inspiration behind a character character like this behind, you know, like one of these characters. That's not a good thing. So this is what they think of the Scientologists is the three. And actually, I think it's a really cool like allegory symbol for how cults go after vulnerable, hurt, broken, angry, sad individuals that are cast out from society. And they methodically like get in their head and use them to further advance their own interests for the pursuit of power. That's pretty good. So yeah, that's them. So anyway, that's why it's my theory that the three had something to do with the orb not working to restore the prosperity to the Darigan Citadel because they probably already had their sights set on Darigan and any predecessor he might have like Cass because they were already so traumatized and hurt and the perfect candidates for them to use to do their thing. And this is just my theory. I don't think it's been like explicitly stated, but I feel like they somehow tampered with the, the power of the orb because it, it isn't that, the, that it was powerless because once Darigan gets it, he starts feeling the influence of the power and all that. And I think that's when they struck. But if they restored everything back to the Darigan kingdom, then that would have that would have made it so that Darigan and Cass and whoever else weren't as vulnerable because then they live in this good, prosperous kingdom again, you know? And so, yeah, that's them. They'll probably make a comeback. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. And now, you know. So when I refer to them, that's who I'm talking about. So back in the Darigan Citadel, Lord Darigan now has the orb bag. It's not working. He's pissed off. He stares into the orb for not more than five seconds and they got him. Yep, they got him. Uh, he is already off the deep end. He goes from zero to 100 in 3.5 seconds. He like mutated into a monster. He was like on fire at one point. He wanted to take over Neopia and let his people starve. That's Lord Darigan, you guys. That's Lord Darigan. He did that, okay? He did that. The man just completely goes from being like a fine, good king, just struggling to lead his people through the terrible times to a comically, insanely power hungry, literally on fire, villain. Just like that. It's not slow or gradual at all. It's almost like he's been waiting his whole life to do this. I don't know. It's just crazy, honestly, compared to other people's encounters with the three. Like the three really got to him, I guess. I don't know. So he just goes completely mad, loses his mind, and just is on the loose, to be honest. And so the Darigan forces actually start helping Meridel because they're like our leader went off the rails. Might I remind you that this is never explicitly stated in this narrative because Cass was a character that was created after this, but Cass is the general at this current time. He's leading these forces, you guys. So he teamed up with Meridel to defeat this common enemy, you know, not because of this like blind loyalty to Darigan, but because that was what was right for the people. Darigan was threatening his his own people. And so Cass was like, let's team up with Meridal, even though I hate them because this is what's right for all of us. And okay, Galgaroth was also a general and he was actually kind of the commander of the army, like the second in command to, to Darigan. However, like Lord Cass was up there. <laughs> he was also making decisions. Like Galgaroth can't just do whatever he wants, you know? He has to like ask other people, you know? So Cass was involved heavily. Like he had a lot of power in that moment in the army and stuff. And so he also also like was cool with teaming up with Meridal is what I'm saying. And that's the thing. It's like, why didn't you step up, Galgaroth? Why didn't you step up to lead the Citadel if it meant that much to you? So the armies join forces and they have to work together to defeat Lord Darigan as this like demon and they defeat him. And then right then and there, the orb splits in half and breaks and cracks and it's powerless. And that's the end of the Champions of Meridal plot. Now you may be wondering what happened to Lord Darigan? He 
was defeated, but then the three kind of took over from there. They came and picked him up. And then they bafflingly decided to generously punish him for failing by throwing him out into a cornfield, just throwing his ass out to the corn. They just decided to humble him by throwing him into a cornfield with no clothes on and no memory. So he ran around for a little while as like this creature, as like this situation, he just so embarrassing, honestly, ran around for a while eating corn and being a local cryptid, living in somebody's barn, eating this little girl's leftovers and shit and being like her, her pet cryptid. It was cute, kind of, honestly. It was cute. It was cute for him. It was very humbling. After that, Meridel and the Darigan Citadel, which is now without a leader, without a ruler, they form a truce, but it's uneasy because yeah, there's a lot of fucking feelings there between the two of them. And and that's where Cass comes in. Lord Cass, as the general of, of the army and as someone who loves his country and his people and saw this, his leader, you know, that he's known as like this great king and then he fell, but he held on and tried to keep leading the people and built up this army and encouraged them to go get their fucking orb back from Meridal and start a war, which I think that they were in their right to do. I'm normally not a proponent for war, but in this case, I'll, I will allow it. So, that was Lord Darrigan, his commander in chief. Now he's gone. He's out in the corn, but they don't know that. They just think he's like been defeated. So Cass steps up, you know, he steps up into this role and he decides that he, you know, fine. If, if no one else will do it, I'll do it. I'll be the Lord of the, of the Citadel. And unlike Lord Darrigan, I'm not going to let King Scarl get away with this. They owe us something. In fact, he was generous enough to be like, honestly, I'll just take one King Scarl's head as as payment and then we'll leave you guys alone, kind of. He did want to just destroy Meridel, actually, honestly, but they started it. <laughs> so he rises to power and people aren't listening to him. And to be clear, it wasn't that the people themselves of the Citadel weren't listening because they were. Oh, they were. It was that the other people in power in the Citadel weren't listening listening for some reason. Like they were just so quick to forgive. I don't know. They just, I guess they didn't want to go to war again, which is understandable. But at the same time, like they just didn't want to get on board with Cass being in power. He did have to resort to some things that, you know, they, they claim are like these horrible sins. Whenever they, they, whenever people talk about like, what did Lord Cass do wrong? They're always like, oh my God, it was so bad. It was so treacherous. He did blackmail and bribery and intimidation to get people on his side. And it's like, is that it? <laughs> like, cause you guys act like he did so many bad things, but that was really honestly it. And as far again, as the body of people, the actual people that he was a public servant of, they were all on board. He inspired a generation. And I truly mean that. Like they were so ready and willing to serve his cause. They were so happy to do it. You know, it was like so nice to see them smiling for once, honestly. You know, at, at my core, I am... I am able to have media literacy actually, even though I am very biased, but I understand that revenge is like not a good thing and will lead you down a path of like self-destruction and shit. You should like break the cycle of violence and stuff. Like, yeah, Meridel started it, but like you can finish it by just ignoring him, just walk away. I get that, but I still just think that his anger was justified, you know? and. All of a sudden, like people like Galgaroth just decided that they were over it. You know, I don't think we should do this. Like, let's just like let them have everything and continue to suffer, you know, because they were still suffering. That's the big thing. Like he really wanted to lead his people into a brighter age where they could like succeed and shit. So Lord Cass just decided like, if you're going to be like a traitor and like side with Meridal, then like, yeah, you're going in the dungeon. <laughs> Sorry. Or better yet, if you're Galgaroth, I'm throwing you off the side of the Citadel. But somehow he survived. The only reason he started throwing people off the Citadel, by the way, so again, going back to the beginning, he steps up. I don't think he initially started by like throwing people off the side of the Citadel or throwing people in the dungeon. I think that that was the three. It was definitely the three, actually. I don't just think that, I know that. The three started to torment him on another level, more than they did Darigan, probably because fucking all of them had a crush on him or something, or they are, they 
they either had like a huge crush on him or they were jealous and they just really went hard on him I feel like so they were tormenting him every night and he was having nightmares he was like so hot and like had his shirt off and he was having nightmares and it was so sad my poor baby I just want to hold him and he had no choice at this point because he was in too deep with them he had like this amulet that he was wearing that was giving him you know the power to be the leader but also the three were able to control him more with that amulet so he was just like totally being haunted by these voices in his head the fucking three and they were pushing him to take more and more extreme measures through means of of bribery and blackmail and threatening people and stuff like okay so get over it i don't know it's just like he wasn't like it's at least he did he did, he started it I really feel like his intentions were good. I really feel like this isn't propaganda and this is really just his true feelings. I really feel like he did nothing wrong. But honestly, like even if that is propaganda, even if he just wanted to incite a war, at the end of the day, I really like knowing that the, the three were there influencing him to gain more and more power. It was never to take over all of Neopia. It was never about money or power. It was about fucking it was, yeah, revenge, I guess, which is also bad, but they took everything from him. We don't, and we don't know his backstory yet. What if they're going to give it to us though? Like what if his parents died or something? Then what? <laughs> then he can do whatever he wants. That's why. Or like, what if some shit, like what if something sad happened to him? Like what if they talk about, oh my God, what if they talk about the years like that he wasn't like b before everything, like when he like experienced the curse? Oh my God, you guys are all going to be sorry for doubting him or forever calling him a villain. I just know it. And it, even if we don't get that, like, that's what I'm hoping in my heart of hearts. I'm really hoping that we get like this, like, oh. Because the thing that pisses me off the most, here's these two boys again, like up in their fucking ivory tower. They're up there just like canoodling, doing nothing. And that's because they're redeemed. You know, they got redeemed, especially Lord Darigan, because his ass got thrown out in the corn. He crawled out at, in just in the nick of time to like defeat Cass. Wasn't his place to do that, by the way. He wasn't wearing clothes when he did it. Crawled out from under the corn, wearing practically nothing. And he just was acting like he was better than everyone else suddenly. He has a fight with Cass and then he breaks Cass's amulet. And then when he breaks the amulet, I guess it's all bets off with the three. And the three are like, nope, uh-uh, you failed, that's it. And they come and get him and fucking Dargan just stands there and does nothing. And they zap him away. And everybody thought that he was dead after that, but there was no body, no body. Anyway, Dargan, like, why are you such a fake little bitch? He has got to be kidding. Will he stop at nothing? It's annoying, honestly. He just acts like he's such a good guy, like so much better. He's such a, he's like the bigger person, you know, like when Scarl goes low, Darigan goes high. Like Cass, what have you become? Oh my gosh, like you're better than this, really? You know that he's being manipulated by the three. Stop acting like this is all his fault and help him. He never once has pulled up for him either. He's never been like, you guys actually know Cass was being manipulated by the three and I've been there before. I'm like, a, I'm a survivor. I'm a three survivor and I would know and like they were way harsher to him than they were to me and I did way worse than him honestly like I came back from literally turning into a demon of some sort and growing like five times his regular size and being on fire and saying I'm going to take over Neopia cast didn't do that but Dargan gets to come back from that and then he acts like he's so much better than everyone he's like <laughs> just like this fucking moment that he has where he's like <sighs> what about him he's the real victim like he just tried his best you know I just really feel like he had the people in mind he had something that hurt him and he had every reason to want revenge and I hope he gets it but I know at the end of the day that like revenge will rot your heart out and his heart's already been through so much. I want him to be at peace and I don't want him to be like chasing revenge, just trying to quell his, his, the hurt inside him with that kind of thing, with revenge. Because at the end of the day, you get it. And then what? And then what? Like everything's fixed? No. No, then like someone else is going to come back for your ass. Probably. I don't know. I mean, does anybody really care about Scarl at the end of the day? Jaren. Like, and you know what else I would love to see? While we're on the topic, because like the plot has not started yet, but I was thinking about this the other day. If you take out Scarl and you like fucking replace the monarchy, I will no longer be mad at, at, at Meridel. I will love Meridel. Meridel's so cute. I want to like Meridel, but I can't. 
because this man sucks. I can't stress that enough. But again, if we took the trash out, there's a dump right over there. In Merry Acres, just simply roll him down the hill and throw him into the heap. He is but rubbish. And then you know who I would love to see be king is like, I don't know, Tormund. Tormund can be king. Jaren, step up. You want to be king? <laughs> sure, fine. You could be king. I don't care. Just as long as it's not Scarl, honestly. I'm trying to like get over my shit with, with, with Jaren because, because you know, Jaren wasn't there with the, in the initial invasion, marital invasion of of. Darg and Citadel. And Tormund's a good guy. He is. I mean, you know, I'm a darkest fairy girly myself, so I'm not like crazy about him or anything, but he's a good guy. I like Tormund. I love Tormund and Roberta actually from the Darkest Fairy game. They're both so cute. And like, I just want to see, honestly, oh my God, I just, now I'm just going crazy. I want to see Tormund and Roberta like be together because like I totally ship them. And then they're king and queen because Roberta is a princess of Bright Vale, so she could be something. I don't know. Leisha. Uh, even. I don't give a fuck who does it. Just someone else. Get the little quiggle guy for all I care. Fucking what's his name? What about this guy? What about this guy from Cheat on the card there? This Gillert. Who is this? This looks like a monarch. He looks like a fine monarch. He looks like he's got his shit together. Why not him? You know, what happened to being able to vote? You don't vote in a monarchy, but still, you know, it's just like we should. We should abolish the monarchy. How about we abolish the monarchy and then we have a democracy? You know, we could just do that. We could try it. So that's the story. Story. That's the story of my man and the tumultuous relationship between Darigan and Meridel. And now that you are just as invested in Cass's whereabouts as I am, I have another exciting, mysterious development in the case to share with you. Let's head over to social media. Okay, so we're here on Facebook.com for the real tea. Like this is where the like substantial post is. And I think the contest is running on Facebook. So yeah, this is like a little activity thing, but wrapped into this is some startling implications. I'm just going to read it and then we'll kind of break it down. All right. Have you seen Lord Cass? There's strange things afoot in Neopia. The Puzzle Hunters Club are taking a quick pause from their avatar search to notice the gray shades sweeping over some of their favorite Neopians. They've heard ominous rumors of a certain sword being spotted in an odd place. Very curious. At their suggestion, you've been asked to help them search for clues. Customize one or more of your pets in the best Darigan themed look to infiltrate Lord Darigan's chambers and look for any hints behind the mysterious whereabouts of Lord Cass. So that's like a lot of information, a lot of canon in-game information. It's definitely plot related, I would say. A couple things to break down. First, just want to quickly note that this is clearly a mission that is going to aid in bringing our boy home. So get ready, you guys. Go get dressed. You heard him. Dress your fucking Neopets. We are, we're storming the Citadel, okay? We are storming the Citadel and we're doing it in style. We have to look hot as possible. We're sneaking in because we need to get clues from Lord Darigan's chambers. Lord Darigan, what say you? It's over, okay? It's all over now. You've been named. We know. We know about the clues. The clues that you have in this chamber currently right now to the whereabouts of your old friend, Lord Cass, aka your competition. You've had them the whole time. This whole time you've been sitting up here having a fucking kiki with Galgaroth and Galgaroth, get back here. Sit the fuck down. I am not done with you. I have not even gotten started with you. Oh, buddy, you're right up here with, with Darigan. You're not going anywhere. The jig is up, okay? Y'all been sitting up here fucking shooting the shit and letting us all believe that Lord Cass is dead. If you really were as redeemed as you say you are, if you really were the man that you you claim to be, you would have jumped into that void to get Cass out because you know in your heart that you went so far past where Cass went and you were so much worse. And if you can come back from that, then surely he can too. So what's the problem, Lord Darigan? What's the holdup? Is it because you're bald? Is it because you're bald and jealous? Is that it? Both of you? That's looking more likely, isn't it, fellas? And what's also looking more likely is that Cass threatened your bestie, King Scarl, didn't he? Because unlike you, who chose to just fall right in line, and just get on board with Meridel and demand nothing from them after they took everything from you guys. Cass was not going to stand for that. Current status with Meridel, truce. Like, what are you guys even doing up here? There's much to be done in the Citadel. Lord Targan is hard at work trying to restore the peace and... and 
oh my God, literally, yes, exactly what it was. And make his people see the error of their ways. Make your people see the error of their ways? You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> no, really, this has got to be some kind of a joke. Your people? The error of their ways? What the fuck did your people do? What did they do other than stand there and believe in something? When is King Scarl going to be held accountable for fucking anything? This is truly a masterclass in narrative manipulation. Honestly, look at you two. Rebuilding his kingdom after Cass's treachery is going to take a while. Yeah, it's going to take a while, isn't it? Because you guys have been sitting up here again for 20 years and nothing's changed. And also, I just find it insane and so hilarious that you would say Cass's treachery. That's so fucking funny coming from both of you. If if anybody's treacherous, it's you two. Literally traitors. Literally both of you are such traitors, it's not even funny. And yet they're trying to paint Cass as the traitor, as the treacherous one. That's what they do when the resistance has a hero. Both of these boys, like, live it up while you fucking can, because... <laughs> he has no pizza experience. He's never been in the pizza category. I would just say, stay tuned. The day of reckoning will come. The record will be straight. There's apparently information that is in Dargan's chambers that we need to get immediately. They are like clearly hiding information. They have like little pieces of paper or some shit. They've got like some shit written in a book that's like, Lord Cass is in the void. <laughs> so we're going up there. We are going up, we're sneaking up. I'm walking right in and I'm saying, Dargan, knock, knock, bitch, party's over. I brought my two gay vampire dogs. You knew this day was coming. Where's the clue? Where's the clue about my husband's whereabouts? Oh my God, I cannot believe it. So yeah, I'll go ahead and end your suffering there by wrapping this up to say, definitely if, you, if you're if you on Facebook, enter the contest because the prizes are awesome. I think it's $50 of Neo Cash for the first prize, 30 for the second prize and 20 for the third prize, which is like a lot. I'm not gonna enter just because I don't wanna have like an unfair advantage or anything, but I did get Ryland and Victor dressed up as you probably noticed when I threatened Lord Dargan and... Um, um, I don't know if you noticed this too, but Ryland's wearing Victor's scarf, <laughs> you know, cause he's like sneakier. So he went in first and Victor was like, hold on. And like tied his scarf around and was just like, you might get cold. He didn't do it cause he's going to get cold by the way. Vampires don't get cold. God love him. Anyway, I am going to end this train wreck of a video by just encouraging you to, if you are into Neopets plots, definitely get back on Neopets, get on Neopets for the first time. I have lots of videos about how to play it cause the stories are so so good and it's only gonna get better. There's so much exciting stuff that's being hinted at and that we know so far. I have a video about what we know so far with the plot and then also I encourage you to go watch the AMA that I hosted and yeah, I think safe to say, like I said, I'm not saying that Lord Cass is coming back. I don't know anything for sure, but I think it's obvious that with like the sword and the mention in the AMA, plus this customization contest being like, where's Lord Cass? That is about all I need to excuse and justify crawling up the walls and banging my head into the ceiling repeatedly like Tony Collette from Hereditary. And now that I've successfully brought that full circle, um, yeah get ready because shit's gonna get crazy. They're hinting at something to do with Lord Cass. Uh, other shit's bad too. Everybody's turning gray. All the shopkeepers, Kari, the Neg Fairy is gray. Mira, get your ass down here. You're taking too long. Put the space shuttle into hyperspeed. Your girlfriend, Kari, is in the trenches. Get down here. And, 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 oh my God, I can't believe I almost forgot this one. This one just came out the other day. Another little clue type thing, a little ominous post on social media. This one just made my heart leap with joy. As you can see, it's a poster of Meridel, but it's been defaced. There's some cracks. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, the beautiful, shiny, pristine white veneer is starting to crack to show the evil blackness within. Looks about right. Who the hell is this down here holding a sad balloon? Not sure. And then look at these slay ass fucking eyes. Like, what is this? No, but seriously, why is like, like there's like this is like traced a little bit with the cloud. And then there's like this. Is that like some? somebody's mouth or something like what is going on then there's like somebody crying and the welcome is crossed out so it just says two two meridal two meridal oh get it like two meridal like and then as you can see i'm just here watching with glee from the tall grass 
That's me. This definitely looks like a threat. Love to see it. And then as you can see over on the sides, it looks like just the faintest little bit of gray seeping in. You see this? Little bits of gray starting to seep in. Yeah. Do you see? Yep. So hopefully Meridal is first on the on the chopping block. I know we got a glimpse of Bright Veil in the in the the teasers in December, but Meridal's right there. So I'd love to see that happen, that take place. Looks like someone's mad at Meridal. Oh, oh, I wonder who. <laughs> love, love, love to see that. Love to see that. Something's coming, you guys. Something's coming. There's something due any day. I will know right away. Soon as it shows. It may come cannonballing down from the sky. Gleam in its eyes bright as a rose. Okay, now the show tunes are officially starting. I gotta go. I need to go. I am, I'm sorry. I am so sorry for this entire video. I really truly apologize. I hope you'll forgive me. And I will see you on those dirty Neopian streets. I'll see you down the street from the Dargan Citadel because we're all meeting up. We're meeting up one of these nights late at night to go break in. So I'll see you there. I love you. I'm sorry. Goodbye.